Hey, what's going on? Beautiful, beautiful day out here on my uh, pretty cool trail system near my house that I don't use very often. So it is, it's gotta be in the low 50s right now. Uh, I'm not quite sure why I'm bundled up so much, <laughs> but it is beautiful. Sun is out. Oh man, what a day for, de for uh, December. So, all right, let's go for a little run. What's going on everybody, Dan the Ultra Dad here. Really hope you enjoyed my run. Uh, this was actually a couple days ago. I went over to a local park and I had a great time out there uh, with a paved trail. So that was really nice, uh, especially given my recent history with injuries. So it was very nice to be able to do that. The weather was perfect. Um, not only sunshine, but also really mild temperatures. So it was just just an awesome day, a great time to go out and run. So as you have seen in my past video, um, I recently injured my ankle. Um, it definitely wasn't as bad as I was thinking it would be. Thankfully, I'm actually running now again, which is great. I was, I was really concerned I wouldn't be running for weeks and weeks on end. Um, honestly, I thought maybe I broke my ankle at the time. Thankfully, thankfully, um, that didn't happen. Um, it's, it, it did swell up quite a bit, um, but that swelling has gone down now. Um, still somewhat painful, um, unfortunately, but, um, but certainly can, can bear some weight on it and can run no problem now. So that's really good news. Um, and it got me thinking, like, how can I avoid and how should we, what do we need to be considering when trying to avoid injury during the winter months? The winter months um, obviously are a little more challenging when it comes to, um, you know, slipping and falling and things like that. So definitely was a topic that came to mind because of my recent injury. I put some thought into it and I've come up with three main areas that you want to consider when it comes to avoiding injury during the winter months. Number one, the terrain that you're on. Number two, the moisture that's involved, if any. And number three, the equipment that you're using. So let's first talk about terrain. So terrain can be, you know, are you running on mud? Are you running on root, lots of roots? Um, are you running on leaves that might be covering rocks and roots? Is it a very rocky trail or is it a buffed out trail? How aggressive is the surface that you're on? You know, obviously that's gonna be something you're gonna wanna consider when you're thinking about how you can protect your ankles, your knees, your legs, uh, your hips, you know, everything up the chain during the winter months when you're running. So. You know, for example, the other day I was running on leaves. Um, it was actually, it was very dry, but it was, there were leaves on roots that were hidden underneath the leaves. And that's what I rolled my ankle on. I ran, I was running along, just enjoying the, the beautiful weather and the leaves. 
and the foliage. And sure enough, I stepped on a hidden root, which caused my foot to, my ankle to roll and roll very significantly. So, you know, that was just, you know, it's, it, I wasn't even thinking about it because I couldn't see it. It's definitely something you want to look out for. Another example of that would be during the winter when it's really cold um, and it's getting there, unfortunately, but during the winter, um, there can be ice that's hidden underneath, you know, it could be dirt, could be leaves, um, could be snow, but there can be very, very slippery ice that's hidden and you definitely have to be careful with that. Um, so the terrain that you're on is definitely a major issue that you need to be considering if you're trying to avoid injury in, during the winter months. One other uh, type of terrain you want to watch out for is, of course, mud. I've actually had pretty good luck with mud in the past. Um, usually, and we'll get into the equipment in a little bit, but usually I'm wearing the right shoes when I'm running through the mud. Um, and I just, you know, I think some people slip more easily. Uh, some people might be taller. Uh, some people might have more issues with slipping on mud. Um, of course, it depends on what kind of mud you're dealing with and how aggressively you're running on that. Um, when I go over a muddy area, I'm always really, really careful to just expect that I'm going to slip. And so my body is ready to, you know, react to that slip. Um, but if you're not ready for that, then you definitely can injure yourself very, very badly uh, when running in the mud. So obviously one of the other things you can do is avoid the mud by running around it. So <laughs> definitely keep that in mind. That's obviously a major consideration when it comes to avoiding injury in the winter months. The second biggest area is going to be the moisture that you're dealing with. Of course, uh, it can run the gamut. So obviously dry is the preferred condition during the winter, at least I think it is. Um, but um, you can, you, you know, it runs the gamut from, from uh, wet conditions uh, that might involve, you know, multiple types of wetness. It could be, it could be rain, um, it could be running water, like through a creek or something like that. Um, you know, you could definitely have other elements if you're, if you're on the road, uh, you could be dealing with oil, uh, you could be dealing with all kinds of different things. So you want to watch out for, you want to watch out for that moisture, uh, that liquid moisture. Then of course you have on the other end of the spectrum, you have icy conditions, you have snow, um, and that can also, you know, present its own dangers. So obviously if it's just slippery ice, um, ice can be a real problem. Um, it can be, especially when it's hidden underneath something else, um, like dirt, like snow. So those are definitely things you want to be watching out for. Um, but, uh, but snow itself can also be very slippery, uh, especially when it starts to combine with ice. Um, snow, when it melts and then refreezes, can just be a complete sheet of ice. So you really, really have to watch out for that if you're going to be out on the trails or anywhere running outside during the winter time. Another part of it would be the phase of that moisture. So is it actively raining or um, is it uh, standing water? So standing water can definitely be a problem um, if you're running through and the standing water happens, happens to be on something smooth, definitely can cause you to be, uh, you know, kind of hydroplaning and slipping on that smooth surface because of the standing water. So these are all major considerations when it comes to trying to mitigate or uh, reduce the chance of injury during the winter months. So third biggest area and the final area I was thinking about is of course the equipment that you're using. So this is definitely going to come down to what shoes are you using? You know, honestly, you could actually be running through the snow and might need some form of snowshoes or um, you might need basically spikes. But, you know, just keeping it simple, the type of trail shoes that you're wearing out on the trails is definitely going to be something that you're going to want to consider when it comes to the equipment that you're using uh, when you're running in, in adverse conditions during the winter time. You know, you definitely wanna have pretty aggressive lugs on your shoes if you're gonna be in any kind of winter moisture like snow, like ice. Um, and certainly in the rain with the mud, you're gonna probably, it's a little bit different type of, um, of grip that you're gonna need, but you're gonna need to be thinking about that too. Uh, quick story, um, before, as I was just getting into trail running, probably about three, four years ago, uh, I ran a race in the winter and it was like negative eight degrees outside in January. It was a half marathon trail race. And I did not own at that time any dedicated trail shoes with any kind of lugs on the bottom. So I ran this race in the woods with uh, about two or three inches of snow on the ground in running slicks, in running shoes, road shoes. So. <laughs> It was an absolute nightmare um, and I was actually pretty fast back then. So I was trying to push the pace in the woods and I fell so many times, a couple times on some really steep 
uh, paths, I fell, I fell completely fell and slid down and it became almost a sliding situation where I was sliding down uh, a hillside. So yeah, you definitely want to be considering what kind of equipment you're using. You want to be considering what kind of lugs you want to use. Um, some brands use different types of rubber on the bottom on the outsole. So one of my favorite trail shoes is the Hoka Speed Goat, but then they use the Vibram um, rubber that's a specific brand of rubber um, that's very, very tacky. So that surface is very, very sticky and tacky. And I, I definitely can vouch for it. Um, it certainly um, has more traction than just typical rubber. So that's the kind of thing that you're gonna wanna think about if you're trying to mitigate or you know, lessen the risk of injury during the winter months. Bringing this all back together, I think about the terrain I'm gonna be on, I think about the moisture I'm dealing with, and I think about the equipment that I need to be using during these times where there's some adverse conditions and pretty dangerous conditions. Uh, for me, unfortunately, a few weeks ago, uh, or maybe it was only one week ago, two weeks ago, I think now, unfortunately, it went the wrong way and I rolled my ankle. Uh, thankfully, it, the injury wasn't severe. Um, and I think that this, even the soreness that's lingering still will hopefully go away. Um, and that'll be, that'll be really nice when it does. But uh, thankfully I can, I can still run now and I can definitely get out and get some exercise. So that is certainly a blessing and I'm very happy about that. So it definitely could have been much worse for me uh, a couple weeks ago when I fell. But um, these are things I'm gonna be thinking about, you know, in the future. Um, certainly for me right now, just applying it to my own training, the terrain I'm on, I'll probably be sticking to the roads as much as I can during this winter. Um, definitely, I still like to go out and run in the snow. You know that, you've seen my videos about that. But I will be thinking twice about doing that, um, you know, because of the risk of slipping and twisting my ankle, things like that, you know. Especially with snow and ice, you know, it could be far worse than just rolling an ankle. You can break your arm, you can break ribs, things like that. And we know how that goes because I just broke a rib a few months ago. That's a lot of fun. So I'll definitely be thinking about how I can stay on the roads as much as possible during these winter months and avoid some of these bad conditions. So. That's number one. As far as moisture, yeah, I'm gonna be thinking really hard about if I really wanna go out on an icy day. Um, I might just stick to a treadmill or stick to a road, assuming that it's not icy as well. Finally, my equipment. Um, I'm definitely gonna be sticking to pretty aggressive trail shoes. Even if I'm on the road, I'll probably be wearing my Nike Pegasus Trail 3s, which are great kind of, uh, which are great for roads and trails. Um, and I'm definitely gonna, and, and if it's really bad out, I might even slip on those Hoka Speed Goats um, or my Ultra Olympus uh, shoes to avoid slipping and sliding out in the cold, icy conditions. That's about all I had for you tonight. I hope that uh, this is somehow helpful to anyone out there. It's kind of common sense. Obviously, it is common sense. Um, but these are the things I was thinking about um, after I rolled my ankle and injured myself. And uh, those are the things that I'm going to be considering moving forward over the next couple months as I train for my 2022 season. I hope your training is going well. I hope everything, your plans are starting to come together for next year's running season uh, like they are for me. I still have some details to iron out um, and I will certainly let you know as those things get decided and get done. Until then, stay strong out there and we will catch you in the next one.